Hi everybody and welcome to this pro and expert playthrough for the City Outskirts Tournament here on the BK Golf Clash YouTube channel. Please hit thumbs up on the video, it helps me out a lot and make sure you're subscribed as well. Totally free to do so. It's par fours only. Lovely mix of holes and some excellent opportunities to get some much needed eagles on those scorecards. Bear in mind this is general win conditions. We don't know the directions until the tournament begins. There will be qualifying round content for pro and expert on Monday morning, so check back as well if you're playing in either of those two divisions. Finally, shots here are all from my old accounts taken from the archives from previous tournaments. So just to make that clear, we've got the replays and we've got the adjustments on screen as well to help you prepare for the City Outskirts tournament. Here we go. Now we have two options on hole number one. We're gonna look at the aggressive one first in any form of tailwind. We're gonna play with a berserker and we're gonna go with two bars of right spin and a little bit of back spin. Uh, the alternate route here with this aggressive option is you play with top spin and go second bounce in the rough and roll out to just before the fringe. But if you've got predominantly tailwind, the back spin method is really nice because you're guaranteed to be on the green with a makeable putt. Max plus 10 power five numbers push back up to max. And then we're gonna go with a little bit of overpower. It's looking around uh, two rings and then going without a wall curl to the right. Try and hit perfect, of course, particularly if you are using the extra mile. Those with Apocalypse uh, 5 Plus have got a really good chance at being close to the pin here. Clears the rough nicely, and we're rolling within a few squares of the whole very simple putt for the eagle. Any form of headwind, the island play is not really going to be possible unless you want to go down the uh, Power 5, win 3 or 4 route. So it would be a layup shot instead and then approach with short irons. Going to play with the rock here for ball guide and accuracy. 3.9 top spin, two bars side spin to the left with a power three ball white ring touching the rough here at plus four. Uh, then we adjust max plus 10. This is just to kind of tap it down the fairway approach to set up a short iron. So no need to go with any overpower here, but I'm using half a ball of curl to the left to counteract the crosswind angle from left to right, which is going against the natural direction of the hole. Then we hit our perfect ball, approaching the tree shadow there, anywhere around here, 320 to 330 yards, absolutely fine. Uh, in this wind angle, I'm playing true club distance, 10% elevation. However, this can play quite a bit more downhill than this. This is taken from an old tournament, so I would have done a distance check to work out my adjustment. It does equate to true club distance plus 10 though in this instance, but please be advised any form of crosswind on this shot, you're going to have to adjust a lot more than that. And this can play 20 or 30% elevation, depending what wind angle and indeed wind strength you're dealing with. But a perfect ball here has a good chance if you've been able to dial in um, an adjustment. Needed a little bit of a tweak in this instance, just burnt the right edge, maybe 15% would be better, but that shot is very wind angle dependent, but it gives you a good idea of the route in a headwind scenario where we can't go aggressive to green. It's actually three main routes on hole number two. You can play left side of the fairway where it splits. You can play right side of the fairway in tailwind and crosswind. You've got rough bump attempts from both sides, but in headwind, it's gonna to have to be a layup to the small patch of fairway you can see I'm aiming at here. Playing with the extra mile level seven, as this was from a lower club account back in the day. But there's also the rock is a great option here. If you want the ball guide and accuracy, it's going to be between zero and two bars of top spin. Always three bars side spin to the right. Max plus 10 is the adjustment here. A bit of curl as well to help bring us along the patch of fairway very nicely. And we're looking for anything between here um, a drive distance of 300 and 315 yards. All depends what club and what ball you want to be using for the second shot so you're not in between clubs. As you can see here, uh, this was taken from a pro tournament. Uh, with a katana, you're at min line with the sniper. If you're playing with a power three ball, you get a longer drive, you're actually gonna be playing max distance or near to max of the Goliath, just to check you're not in between clubs. So make sure you plan ahead with your club and ball selection. Finding the minimum distance line here, applying spins to get the ball guide as I need with this wind angle. And in here, in this scenario, I'm playing minimum distance, 
10% elevation. Obviously, if you're going with a long iron shot, you will be in Goliath range. You'll be playing near a max distance between 0 and 10% elevation, depending what wind angle you've got. Just missing this one top side, but that's the shot you want to be playing. Use your spin, find a nice consistent landing uh, spot without any glitches, and you've got a good chance at the eagle on hole two. Hole number three is the first one from the Sharuba Springs. We've got a nice wind angle here. We're going to play with a quarterback, two top spin and three bars side spin to the right. The key with this hole is not to drive too far. You're going to have to make a decision how far you want to push this, whether you want to go um, with more distance, 350, 360 yards to play with the Grizzly or the Goliath, or you lay up a bit shorter as I do here, going one to one with the adjustment and half a ball of curl to the right. And you'll see here with the drive distance being considerably shorter than 360 yards. Let's just see what we've got here in the video. Uh, 328. So around 330, you're going to be playing the second shot with the sniper. And the good thing here uh, with going uh, near to minimum distance sniper is that you can play rings from min without having to do a distance check. So you can find the minimum distance line and work your adjustment out from there. This was again taken from a tournament a while ago, um, so this adjustment really is due to this specific wind angle. As you can see though, adjusting here with this cross tailwind is going to take us massively down into the bunker, so that's why I'm setting up with my landing position so close to the edge of the rough. Minus 15% elevation at true club distance here, if you're adjusting into the sand, you don't need that much adjustment when you're dropping so far downhill. Um, if you've got level crosswind left to right, I'd play it minus 10, to be honest, at club distance. But again, it's something to dial in once we know the tournament wins. But it falls very nicely as a good route to the pin for the eagle with the rough bump there on hole three. Quick break here to remind you all there will be a special end of season 53 live stream event on the channel Sunday the 23rd of October in the evening UK time. Join in, say hello in the chat, ask me some questions about the gameplay or game in general if you want to. Uh, your chance to interact with me live, there'll be polls, there'll be a couple of giveaways and there will be a special guest as well. Loads of stuff coming up on that live stream. It's already scheduled on the channel so go over there and set yourself a reminder. Sunday 23rd of October. Hole number four, I played this one with the Apocalypse but I didn't really need to. This was because it was from a tournament scenario. This was the most accurate driver I had on this account at the time. Uh, going with between one and two top spin, depending on the wind angle, a couple of bars side spin to the right. Um, if you don't have headwind and you have level crosswind or tailwind, I would actually go with the rock or the quarterback, really. Probably the rock, though, because you won't need to push up. And you've got good distance, you've got uh, ball guide and accuracy. And when we're playing onto narrow fairways like this, we don't really want to be using anything with low accuracy that may end up in the rough because you're going to have a difficult job in a nasty wind, reaching the green in two with your rough iron. Max plus 10 is the adjustment here. I try to go without overpower on this one. So in headwind scenario, you can set up with an accurate driver and then switch to the extra mile or APOC or Thor's hammer, whichever gives you the best stats according to your play style. Drive distance here is going to be around 310 to 316 yards. Second shot is a tough one to drop, to be honest, because of the bunker in the way and also a fairly high second bounce because you also always need to play with backspin. It's going to be between three and four bars of backspin, depending on the wind, and always some side spin to the right. That is because I don't want to set up ridiculously close to the rough and then risk hitting a great right and landing straight into the rough, or indeed for anybody watching. I want to try and guard against great ball hits if possible. True club distance, 20% elevation um, was the adjustment here. We're always going to be near to max distance with the sniper. Lower level snipers may struggle here and need to push the drive a bit further uh, or need to push up to reach. But we're trying to get an aggressive line to the pin there for the eagle. It's a tough one to drop and a token or two is advised. So you can dial in your adjustments depending on the wind angle that you have for your approach. Loads of ways that you could play hole five, depending how far you want to push the drive in terms of clubs, top spin, balls and wind angle. Um, but you're either going to be left with a putt, a wedge or a very uh, close range short iron, which is what I've got in the video here. Going with top spin, 
and a right spinning tailwind angle, I'd actually go with the Titan rather than a Kingmaker because you want a little bit more wind push, try and get yourself closer to green. But one thing to be aware of, there is a glitch roll in play. So if you overdo the top spin and get unlucky with your bounces down the second piece of fairway, you can end up flying the green and ending up in the rough or the sand at the back. So be cautious on this one, yet aggressive at the same time. Extra mile bouncing uh, directly over there, or you can go big topper and bounce over the rough, or you can play with a power five ball and try and get even closer. All up to you and depending what wind angle you have. 362 yards with our max plus 10 adjustment on the drive means I can play rings from min with the thorn, but I can't play from the minimum line in tailwind because I've got nowhere to adjust. So pushing forward six rings in this instance and then applying some backspin, getting the ball guide aiming at the hole, Stopping a little bit short, of course, with Tailwind and a lower level Thorn will need to stop a little bit shorter than that due to not having a fully developed ball guide. Rings from Min plus 10% in this wind angle is going to come in very nicely. Uh, setting up for my adjustment and uh, making the adjustment there. Going to go and hit perfect. Like I said, if you're nearer, you can play Enbring a School 20% elevation. Make sure your ball guide is at the pin or just beyond because, as you can see here, there's a little uphill slope to the pin. So you don't want to come in short in line. This is going to be a very important hole to eagle in this tournament on hole five. Two options here on hole number six. First one is going to be the aggressive route with a berserker and distance driver. We're going to go six top spin and two bars side spin. To the left, if you don't have extra mile eight, you could play with a low level APOC. Um, APOC four would be good. Thor's Hammer five would be good as well. Uh, if you have only low clubs, you could investigate a top spin boost ball. But we're stretching out once we've added spin to find the position. We're just max plus 15. I don't push up to max because the tailwind is going to do the trick. And I've gone with full overpower, slower needle, easier to hit perfect. But you want the ball to bounce in the fairway and either roll um, out from the rough or clear the rough completely, in which case you'd need less top spin. You're gonna from there have an end bring a school wedge, 20% elevation, or you're gonna be putting for an easy eagle. One of the safe routes now on hole six, if you don't have the wind or the equipment to go for it, is playing over on the left hand side. There's also a rough bump with the quarterback further to the right there, just off picture, you've got a couple of choices, but I'm showing you this left hand route. Uh, going with a top spin only, aiming down the middle of the fairway at max distance with the extra mile. Of course, other drivers will work here as well. Thor's Hammer, APOC, all perfectly fine. Max plus 10, it takes me to overpower because there's a little bit of headwind angle here. So I'm going to add that on, plus one ring to compensate because I don't want the second bounce in any way to clip the rough. Try and hit perfect, of course, especially with the extra mile with slightly deficient accuracy compared with other high level drivers. Clears the rough very nicely and the ball goes down the fairway here. Drive distance of 381 yards. Second shot we're going to play with the Grizzly for the ball guide. Adding spin first, one bar of backspin, one bar of right spin and there's a very nice consistent place to bounce here. I did a fringe check to get my club distance as this was taken from dialing in some tournament shots. Um, in the end, the adjustment I make is actually equal to medium distance, zero elevation. Crosswind, you may want to go with 10%, though, just to counteract that little wind push you're going to get from left to right or right to left, depending on the direction of the wind angle. Mid plus zero here on this one, ball guide to the hole, and there's a very nice smooth track to the pin from the beginning of the green, which we hope to catch. I wouldn't describe it as a funnel, but it's a nice consistent route down with no glitches. And that's good when you're playing from distance to try and get your eagle. We are right at pin here, falling nicely for an eagle with the safe option on hole six. Very quick break in between holes here to let you know that we'll be qualifying round content out on Monday morning fairly soon after the tournament has begun for the City Outskirts tournament. If you're playing expert, then we've got you covered here for qualifying round. But also if you're dropping down to pro or playing two divisions, there will be full playthroughs available with tournament wins as well as the general uh, random wind direction playthrough that is out already for the City Outskirts Tournament. 
Hole 7 can be tricky due to the glitchy fairway and also adjusting either up onto the green or down the slope for your second shot. Depending on the wind angle as well, tailwind is nice and straightforward or rather more straightforward than it could be. Headwind is nasty. We're going to go with four and a half top spin, one right spin stretching out to have the second bounce just beyond the rough there up ahead. Looking at how many rings I need extra on the club distance that I have. Setting up at max with the extra mile, level seven. Having a Titan here for more wind push, obviously up in expert, you probably won't want to do that as you might gallop off the end of the fairway. Max plus 10, then I'm pushing up the number of rings I needed to um, compensate once I was stretching out to find my position. Perfect ball away, and this one will bounce very nicely. The thing here is to go easy on the top spin. I wouldn't play with any more than four or maybe four and a half bars. We don't want to push it any further than that, otherwise you're going to shoot off into the rough. So easy on the top spin, four and a half will be the absolute max needed there, and I'd probably play a bit safer and go with four, to be honest. Finding my club distance here, min and max line, then I'm going to go with a rough bump because that is the best chance at dropping the eagle. Obviously, if you don't want to do that, you can bounce over using um, top spin from the previous bit of fairway. You could even try a max backspin or a backspin boost shot with the guardian if you want to hold the green that way. But the sniper rough bump is, in my opinion, the best chance. So I'm adding spin, red ring touching the rough, and then adjusting true club distance. 5% elevation. Here I actually pushed up after adjusting because I didn't compensate or factor that in to my landing position. To avoid the push up you can just set up with the yellow ring touching the rough rather than the red because that will compensate for losing distance adjusting down the slope. We're safely on there, over adjusted though and slightly lacking in pace. This was in an early part of dialing in um, so it wasn't refined here but you can compensate easily by having more top spin if you're going to drop down to a lower point. Always things to um, factor in when you're dialing in your tournament shots here on the Oasis hole number seven. On hole number eight, if you have tailwind, you can play over to the fairway on the left for a more direct line at the pin, but any form of headwind or indeed level crosswind, then I would advise you to go on the right-hand side. Playing with top spin, get the ball guide pointing straight down the middle of the fairway. Setting up at max distance here with the extra mile, going to adjust max plus 10, it does take me into overpower, so I'm going to add that on. The alternate method is, of course, you set up further back, give yourself room to adjust, and then go with full overpower, play a slow needle shot. Choice is yours, but both of them will get you to approximately uh, the same point. You're just looking for a safe shot down the fairway on this hole. Perfect ball away with the overpower, getting here to a drive distance of... 338 yards. There's no point going absolutely crazy with drive distance on this one because I always want to play from the minimum distance line, especially from this side of the hole. Find the min line with the sniper, so pack the grizzly so it's nice and easy. And then in headwind, uh, even if it's just a narrow margin of headwind, you can play from the min line, spin to get the ball guide to the back of the cut so that it will compensate for any wind push uh, or to the pin in crosswind. Then we adjust to minimum numbers, minus 5% elevation. This shot plays uphill, as it also does from the left-hand fairway as well. So regardless of the route you're taking, I would be going min minus 5 or minus 10, depending on the wind angle. If you're playing this side in tailwind, you will need to push up 5 or 10 rings so you have room to adjust back. But the principle is the same. We want a minus 5 elevation from close to minimum distance of the sniper for the eagle. And finally, on to hole number nine. Uh, there is an aggressive option here with a power five ball or a max OP power three onto that little fairway island to leave yourself about a 60% wedge shot. But if you don't fancy going for that or you've got an unpleasant wind angle, then I would recommend you go with the rock here for the ball guide and accuracy. A few bars of top spin, two bars side spin to the left and aim down that little area of fairway. Adjustment here, maximum distance 10% elevation. Obviously, if you've got headwind here, you would need to go with a driver with more distance so that you've got a clear shot to the green with your long iron. Sorry, your short iron. We're going to play with a thorn here. Crosswind, however, don't need any overpower. Don't need any curl due to the wind's going to push us from right to left along the direction of the dogleg. We get a nice bounce there 
a little hop with a top spin drive distance of 334 yards. Second shot going to be playing with the Thorn and again doing a distance check as this was taken from a previous tournament but it does equate also to true club distance TC on the notepad 10% elevation so I'm finding the min line I'm finding the max line and I estimate where I am here in terms of the distance between the two. In the example here, it looks like around 35 to 40% of clubs, so that will give me a good indication of slider value if you haven't got a pin check or a fringe check reference to work from. And again, all of those are tournament wind specific. Adding a little bit of backspin, checking for dead spots or glitchy areas on the green, of which there are a few, so bear that in mind if you're playing with the thorn or indeed the end bringer. Make sure you need to apply some spin to get round any dodgy areas on the green that you do so. True club distance, 10% elevation, hitting perfect and we drop it for a very nice eagle on hole number nine. Thanks for watching this video on the City Outskirts Tournament. I hope you found the content useful. Plenty more useful content to be had on our Facebook group as well. Over 10,000 members there. Search for BK Golf Clash and join. It is totally free and there is a link to that group in the video description down below. Share your shots as well as enjoying the discussions and taking part in those on the group. Then please highlight some of your best shots. I'll be looking at them and I'll be showcasing the top five on my end of season 53 party stream, which is going to be Sunday 23rd of October. Good luck in the tournament. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.